So we know how to generate charges. And these charges we're going to now use to investigate the energy given off by light. So here we're going to bring on something that actually involves something like the Van de Graaff generator. In fact, over here we have the equivalent of the Van de Graaff generator. And this plate on top is Philip. Well, Philip's crown. Because what we have here is a gold leaf, two gold leaves that are actually together at the moment and they're connected to a metal rod and on top is this metal plate and it's all part of the same thing, it's all isolated. So I can actually take some charges and here they're just connected to a, um, we just connected this crocodile clip to a circuit. So I can actually place some charges on here and you can see that just like Philip's crown, the leaves fly apart. But I can discharge it to show how the charges can leave. But I'm interested, not in discharging it with my finger, but I'm interested in trying to discharge this with light. In other words, I'm interested in how much energy I need to actually knock the charges off of this plate and therefore discharge these leaves. So these leaves are detecting the presence of charges. Now, if I come over here, where we have the lamp, here I have a control for the brightness, and at the moment we have it set up so that the colour of the, the light being produced by the lamp is actually red. You can see that the leaves are still separated, so there's charge still on the leaves. Now, if I increase the brightness of the light, that's it being increased, the leaves are still separated, so the charge remains on these leaves. But now I'm going to take it down to its dimmest level, and instead of changing the brightness of the light, I'm actually going to change the colour. What I'm going to do to change the colour is actually go up in frequency. By going up in frequency, I pass from red through to green. You can just about see the green appearing now. And then I pass through to blue. There's the blue. Leaves still separated. So there's still charge on this thing. Now I pass out of the visible spectrum. And we're going into the ultraviolet. And now you can just about see that we're in the ultraviolet and these leaves are just about beginning to come together. So the colour made the charges leave. The colour determined whether the charges leave, not the brightness. This is the start of the quantum revolution because this interpretation, or this experiment, to interpret it, if you try to use what scientists knew at the time about energy in waves, it doesn't work. I guess the waves that we're most familiar with, ones at the beach. Imagine we're at the beach. We're going to think about how much energy it would need to move some of the pebbles at the edge of the beach. When it's a calm day, when the waves aren't very big, we wouldn't expect many of these pebbles to actually be moved. But if it was a really kind of rough day, you expect when waves are big, they've got lots of energy in them, they'll do things, they'll kick things, they'll kick the pebbles. The light waves will kick the charges out of that plate. But that's not what we saw. It didn't matter how bright the light was. It was the colour that determined whether the charge is left. It's basically the same problem as with the oven. Somehow the calculation for the energy in a light wave is not giving the right answer. It's not predicting the right things. It's not agreeing with what's observed experimentally. It's actually Einstein at the beginning of this century who managed to make a breakthrough with this problem. He was particularly interested in the one that we saw with the electroscope. 
He couldn't understand it. What was wrong with this wave theory of life? So he thought about it and he thought, wait a minute, these charges have got to leave the plate. They must be kind of hit by something. Got to be hit by something in order to leave. We're thinking of light as a wave. Can't we think of it as a particle? In fact, that's what he said. That light should be thought of as a stream of particles. If I take these two snooker balls. Here's a particle. It's red. What Einstein was saying was that a red particle of light has less energy than a blue particle of light. So what he was saying was that the energy of this particle depended on its colour, depended on its frequency. There was a packet of energy and he called it the photon and it was a quantum of energy. And that was the birth of quantum physics. We're going to test that out. We're going to see if Einstein can actually explain the experiment we saw. If Einstein's theory works. And I need a volunteer for this. A volunteer who's recently been to a fairground. No, it can be anyone. Would you like to come up? What's your name? Daniel. Daniel. Any good at coconut shies? Uh, sometimes. Okay, let's see if today is one of those times. So Daniel, what I want to do is, first of all, I'm going to pass you these red balls. See if you can knock off one of those coconuts. Aim more than strength. Ah, right, okay. Ah, right, okay. Well, you've had two hits and nothing's yet come off. Nothing wrong with your aim there. Maybe it's something wrong with the balls. They're soft and they're light. Blue balls? Let's try blue balls. Now these are heavier. Let's see what happens. Oh! <laughs> He's done this before. Yeah. Wonderful. You did it. That's it. Thank you very much. Yeah. What we just saw was exactly what Einstein was saying. It doesn't matter how many of these red balls you throw. You're not going to dislodge one of these coconuts, which is one of the electrons on the plate. Throw a blue ball, and you can do it. The actual energy in the photons is determined by their frequency, by their color. And that's why in the experiment that we just saw, it was the color that was determining when the charges would actually leave the plate. So Einstein was right. In fact, it set off the whole quantum revolution. Because it turns out that this kind of double secret life of light, the light, and the, the light being a wave, the light being a particle, was actually true for electrons. Now electrons are charges, such as the charges we generated in the Van de Graaff generator. And electrons live inside atoms. But it was J.J. Thompson that discovered the electron. He was interested in these negative charges and he found that he could explain what was going on by saying that there was something called an electron that had a negative charge and it was a particle. But things got a bit complicated in the Thompson household. Because 30 years later, after his father had been awarded the Nobel Prize for the discovery that electron was a particle, his son, George, got the Nobel Prize for saying Electron was a wave. <laughs> now you can imagine what Sunday lunches in the Thompson household must have been like. Slightly complicated. Who was right, father or son? Electron's a particle, Electron's a wave. Well, they were both right. 